One thing that's pretty clear is that most people can't get their hands around Bitcoin because it's an utter paradigm shift. And why is it a paradigm shift? Well, because I think Bitcoin is the first digital money. I mean, it's the first digital money. Gold wasn't digital money and, and fiat's not digital money either. Um, and so economists and politicians and investors, they all lack the right mental model to understand Bitcoin because science and engineering were so intrinsic to gold that we took it for granted because gold was a it's a 10 pound lump of something and if you if you get slugged in the head with it nobody had to explain that science and physics mattered and then science and engineering kind of became like quasi irrelevant in the fiat world. Everybody just kind of, uh, they ignored science and engineering and there were no immediate clear consequences. There were just the hyperinflations and the collapses of those fiat systems. But, but because, because they had abandoned gold and there was no digital money, there were the only alternative to one fiat you know, the Weimar Republic fiat currency was the next, the pound and that alternative, you know, was an alternative to the next thing and the next thing. So we were comparing fiat currencies or fiat monies to each other. And so there was no real need to embrace science and engineering. And Bitcoin is this paradigm shift where we have uh, digital money crashing into, uh, I guess what we'll call uh, a uh, analog money or maybe a political money is a better way to describe it and um now we start to ask the question again what is money mm -hmm. and i think tokenized energy isn't good enough to to explain what is money uh, an another way to describe money is by coming back to the ideal model what is the ideal model of money ideal money is a shared immutable correct ledger you know, you've heard the phrase, you know, Bitcoin is a shared immutable ledger and people debate about whether it's truly immutable or not. But, but uh, you know, a crypto asset network fully decentralized and mature is the closest thing we can get to an immutable shared ledger in the history of the world. I think a lot of times when people describe it as a shared immutable ledger, they leave off the correct or the mathematically correct because it's almost implied. But I think that if you were to focus upon the three critical dimensions of ideal money, you would say it's a ledger that's shared. Everybody, everybody in the um, in the political system has to have the same access to the ledger. It has to be immutable. No one can doctor it. But it has to be correct, mathematically co complete or mathematically proper, because if it's incomplete or incorrect, then it's not ideal money. So if I take that as a model, money is a shared, immutable, correct ledger, right? Then I can imagine the perfect money would be, you know, some godlike being comes down on Earth and they create this perfect, uncorruptible system and they telepathically they telepathically drop that shared immutable correct ledger into the heads of every human being and every time you incur a debt it updates the ledger and when you incur a credit it updates the ledger if rome was the greatest empire on earth when their final settlement network failed then the empire collapsed and what you have is just a, a history is the endless succession of successive empires rising up with a new gold standard that was not debased and then and then generation after generation the coinage of that next empire the successor empire would be debased and then that empire would fail and collapse and then another empire would come along and they would start the cycle over and over again and and yet the myth of gold as as uh, immutable money right or or the sovereign store of value it stayed with us for thousands of years into the 20th century i would say that the gold standard has been dying a slow death a death by a thousand cuts 1914 comes along you know we've got we've got the golden age from one of our 1870 and 1914 but then world war one comes along and then in 1914 uh, every country abandons the gold standard and maybe that's the final cut and uh, after World War One, you know, the Treaty of Genoa, we came back to a gold reserve standard. And in essence, we had gold backing the power. And that degree of backing 
successively slid. So there was a debasement of the pound and the dollar consistently and gradually. And then, of course, the, you know, the, the pound and the dollar became layer two applications, if you will. And then every other currency became a layer three derivative. Mm -hmm. And then everything else in the economy was built on those derivatives. So you had basically layers of derivatives of gold that got progressively less backed by tangible energy yep. or denurtured. And that resulted in, you know, who knows how many collapses, the Great Depression, eventually you get World War II, which you could say, you know, came out of just a bunch of economic collapses like the Weimar Republic. And um, all the gold ended up getting centralized, you know, and seized by the Americans in Fort Knox. And then we wrapped Bretton Woods around it. And Bretton Woods was the second gold reserve standard of the century, except this time it's just the dollar was the reserve currency, backed some percentage by gold, say 40% or 30% by gold. And then every year thereafter, it slid from 40 to 30 to 20. Mm -hmm. Shut, I shudder to say, right? It must've been less than 10 by 1971. And in 1971, we defaulted on the gold standard in essence, at that point, right, the gold standard was, no, the gold reserve standard was effectively dead. Right. Gold still has the fiction of being a store of value and an asset. And uh, if you're looking for a non-sovereign store of value between 1971 and uh, the invention of Bitcoin, you could have gone to gold. I guess you could have used property like land or commodities, timber rights, oil rights, something like that. And you could have used art. There's probably there's probably no one king, right? People dabble with is is silver, you know, a store of value. I think the free market went back and forth, but it's it's pretty clear that gold kind of died. It started dying, if not it died as a store of value about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. As far as I can see, when Bitcoin was uh, was formed, and if we look at performance in the last 12 months, right? Let's just for for kicks let's just go and and look at uh, 12 months of performance so it's quite a day right in 12 months bitcoin is up 240 percent gold is down 9.82 percent over the course of 10 years bitcoin is up 132 percent compounded annual growth rate gold is 94 basis points the S and P index is is thirteen point nine percent over ten years, thirty three percent over one year. And um, summary, right? Is store gold is not a store of value in the last decade. It's it's something opposite of a store of value. Mm -hmm. If the S and P is up thirty three percent in twelve months, then a reasonable surrogate for the collapse of purchasing power of the currency in 12 months is you know the inverse of that right but you could say you need 33.7 percent more money to buy us the same sh share of the s p yep so a store of value has to clock at 33 percent or better and gold is minus 40 percent mm -hmm. and bitcoin is plus 200 percent so that's that's the marketplace screaming at you that no one really sees yeah gold is a monetary asset anymore except okay. for the gold bugs